We are so excited to be here with you this morning. Excited to worship the Lord and spend time in His presence. Excited to hear the Word. Um, if you haven't noticed, it's Christmas around here. So if you haven't gotten the Christmas spirit yet, the Merry Christmas. Um, we're going to read a scripture as we prepare for worship this morning. It's a scripture I love in Hebrews chapter 12. And it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Here's the part I love. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, before the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I would encourage you this morning, whatever you're walking through, whatever you came in with, the Bible says, well, why don't you throw those down? Every weight, every sin, every distraction, every anxiety, everything that wants to fight for your attention, and fix your eyes on Jesus. And I promise you, if you would fix your eyes on him, you'd find hope in life this morning. Amen? So Lord, we are so excited to be in your presence. We are so thankful to be here with you this morning. We love you. God, we welcome you. We just pray that you would be here this morning in your church, God, that you would be glorified and magnified, and that you would be with every person this morning. We love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. This is no performance, Lord, I pray it's worship, empty words I can't afford. I'm not chasing feelings, that's not why I'm singing, you're the reason for my song. Darkness fades into new beginnings. 
As we lift our eyes to who hope we are Our creation waits With an expectation To declare the reign of the Lord our God Silence break the name of Jesus as the heavens cry that the earth respond Our creation shouts with the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. Bye. 
scar At work, all at home and our families God, everywhere we go And everything we do, we need your presence Oh God, we're longing for more of you God, we're desperate for more We need you more and more Come on church, can we begin to cry out from our heart For more of the Holy Spirit in our lives The more than just a song we sing in church that every moment as we go to work, as we go home, it would be the cry of our hearts that we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you, Lord God. We're so 
thankful this morning, God, for the power of your name. Lord God, we're so thankful, God, for, for who you are and what you're doing among us, God. Let us not forget, God, who you are, God, that who, who you claim to be, God, is exactly who you are, Father God, that you rose from the grave, God, and, and you have power, God, in our lives, God, and I don't want us to forget. God, I, I can so often forget for myself. I think so many of us, we forget, God, who you are, God. Let us be aware, God, of what you want to do this morning, God, and let us carry that awareness into our day and everything we do today and this week and this month and for our whole lives, God. We thank you this morning, God. We worship you. We give you praise and glory and honor and worship in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, you can grab your seats. Good morning and welcome to Joy Church. We are so glad that you're with us this morning. Uh, if we haven't got the opportunity to meet you, if you're new to Joy Church, maybe it's your first time, second time, or maybe you've came and, and then left and came back years later, we would love to meet you and your family at our Connection Center in the foyer. Right out these back doors, there's a little table out there. It says Connect Center on it. If you don't mind stopping by there, we'd love to meet you. But if you don't have a chance to do that, right in the seat in front of you, there is a card um, like the one behind me that says Welcome Home on it. If you don't mind filling that out, you can drop it in the offering bucket when those go by in a few minutes, or you can leave it at the Connect Center and turn it in for a free gift. So we'd love to meet you and your family. Also, we want to let you know, uh, we have Connect Groups happening tonight and throughout this week, and so you want to join a Connect Group. Connect Groups are the lifeblood of everything we do here at Joy Church, and so if you're not a part of a Connect Group, we would love for you to get a part of a Connect Group. Next week's Christmas parties, so you want to make sure you join so you can go to the Christmas parties next week. But uh, we have table in the foyer, um, our Connect table, so please stop by there to find out more information about our Connect groups. And then finally, we wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who came out yesterday for our all-church work day. Thank you so much. We had people hanging all these beautiful lights, people painting, people cleaning, people doing tons of stuff. So thank you so much for coming out Joy Church yesterday and making our church look beautiful. At this time, we are going to direct our attention to the screens for this week's announcement video. No matter how long you've been coming to Joy Church, your very best next step is our Growth Track class. Growth Track happens every week and you can jump in at any time. It happens after our second service at 12.30 p.m. in our Junior High Center. And both lunch and childcare are provided. And so we can't wait to see you today for our Growth Track class. Merry Christmas. We would love to invite you to come celebrate Christmas with us here at Joy Church Medford. This year, we're having two services on Sunday, December 17th at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. There's going to be a dynamic kids program, free cookies and hot cocoa, a family photo booth, and just tons of fun for the whole family. You do not want to miss it. So bring your family, bring your friends, and come celebrate the season with us here at Joy Church Medford. Christmas candlelight service is a Joy Church tradition throughout the years. We would love to invite you and your family to come celebrate the birth of Jesus with us with stories and songs and fun for the whole family. It's gonna be Wednesday evening, December 20th at 7 p.m. Come out, have a great night as we celebrate Jesus and we celebrate Christmas. Young adults, we have our Young Adult Christmas Party Monday night, December 11th at 7 p.m. at Rise Coffee House. It is going to be an amazing time. We'd love to have you there. We have an exciting event coming up on Sunday, December 10th after our second service, and that is our Zoe Intern Bake Sale, Raffle, and Auction. Zoe is a truly incredible program that we have here at Joy Church. It's a two to three year Bible college internship program that so many people have gone through. I know I personally went through three years and many of our staff, our leaders, and many other people at Joy Church have been impacted by the great program. We would love to invite you to come out and support our great Zoe interns. There's gonna be plenty of fun ways to support. We're gonna have lots of baked goods for sale so you can buy those for your family as well as your connect groups as well as the opportunity to win plenty of fun packages like the Ashland Date Package complete with Oregon Shakespeare Festival tickets, our family package to the Family Fun Center and Wildlife Safari, an adventure package with the Segway Tour and scuba diving lessons as well as plenty of fun gift cards to salons, restaurants, and many fun experiences that can make some great Christmas presents this year. So Mark Mark your calendars, don't miss out, and come out to support the Zoe Intern Bake Sale, Raffle, and Auction on Sunday, December 10th. We'll see you there.
There's a lot going on in the month of December, and so we'd love for you to just stay up to date with everything we're doing. Um, so if you want to, like us on Facebook. That is the best way to find out all the current updates of what's going on. We just posted kind of all of our December events so that you can make sure there's pretty much something every week, and so make sure that you stay up to date on what's going on. Also, today is week one of Growth Track which is awesome. If you have yet to join Growth Track, you are missing out. You need to gr join Growth Track today. It's week one. You can jump in anytime, but week one is one of the best weeks to jump in for the first time. Lunch and childcare are provided, and so there's no reason, no excuses why you can't be able to come. It's after service today in our Junior High Center, so we'd love to see you today for our Growth Track class. At this time, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings, so if our ushers want to go ahead and get ready, we are going to read a scripture out of Luke chapter. 16 verse 10 you can follow along with behind me it says if you are faithful in little things you will be faithful in large ones but if you are dishonest in little things you won't be honest with greater responsibilities now we humans are funny because we think that just because something is small means it's insignificant and should be put off right we think that all the time, right? We sometimes think, well, if it's small, it doesn't matter that much. When this verse is clearly saying God wants us to be faithful in little things because he knows if we're not faithful in the small things, we're also not going to be faithful with the big ones. So sometimes we can think my income's small, so I don't have to be faithful with tithing. And when I have more money, I'll be able to tithe and I'll be faithful then, right? But that's just so opposite from the truth. A few years ago, Gino and I went to an investment banker and he was telling us, you know, we were like, we don't have a lot of income. And he was like, no, it's okay when you don't have that much, it's so good to start investing early, get in the habit early so that you'll be in the habit later. And that so, same is so true with our tithing. If we say, I will wait to be obedient to God until I have more money or more resources, whatever it is, then we probably will never do it. Instead saying, I want to be faithful today with what God's given me, however big, however small, I want to be faithful to give my tithe, faithful to give my offering this morning. So we're going to pray and then we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all the faithful givers. God, I know so many are obedient obedient and are following these principles, God, and we just pray a blessing on them. God, we pray a blessing on the tithes and offerings as they come in this morning and as they go out for your uses. God, we thank you this morning. Bless the tithes and offerings and the givers who give this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, ushers. After what was a very bloody weekend of violence sparked by racism. On Thursday, Oregon will become the next state to legalize recreational marijuana. For tonight, where they're calling this political fight night, the last two debates were called personal, nasty, dark. Uh, making same-sex legal, same-sex marriage legal in this country. The State Department of Health says thousands of children suffer from abuse and neglect each year. Often because of the violent content. Well, a new study finds a link between violent games and aggressive behavior in children. Someone from the Central Intelligence Agency sort of outlining the war plan. Political strife drags on and an economic crisis brings soaring prices. There are a number of websites, of course, that kids and teenagers spend time on, which experts say can be dangerous. Good morning, church. How you guys doing? You good? It's a good day to be in God's house. You guys agree? All right, confession moment right now. How many of you already this morning have looked at your phone during church? How many of you right now has asked this question aren't raising your hand because you're distracted? That's a true confession. Well, before we dive into talking about this area of media, we have a special birthday in the house. It is my mother, Pastor Kim's birthday today. So, so thankful she's born, and you know she'll be hitting up all the free coffees today. But if you still want to bless her with one, you can. So it's a big happy birthday to her. We love you, Mom, Pastor Kim. Pastor Kim, Mom. You can, call her, you can call her that too, Mama, Pastor Kim or something. Well, I, this morning we're continuing in our series, Navigating, or The Art of Survival, Navigating Perilous Waters. And we're looking at the subject of media. And I feel like um, it's important, one of the areas of communication, you've got to trust me and I have to bear my faults 
before you in order for you to trust me. Does anyone agree that that would help you today? So I feel like you need to know that I've reached a new low when it comes to media consumption. And I forgot to share this with, I didn't share this with first service, but uh, I have become one of those people that turns on a fake fireplace on YouTube and my Christmas tree is set up, it looks great. And then I have a YouTube video where it's a scene of a fireplace with, with like a mantle and, uh, and there's live sound of crackling wood. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else do the same thing? Thank you, Pastor Mike. And yes, we, I, I feel like that is, that is, this is our generation. We don't even have to have real fire and we're happy. We're like, it sounds like fire and it looks like fire. I just, you know, then I just get a candle and warm myself over it. So I had some people over the other night and they came in and there was a crackling fire that was fake. This is the problem with my generation. Why does it matter to talk? Why would we take a whole Sunday to look at the area of media? And not only that, but to say, how do we actually survive and thrive in the area of what we consume, what we watch, what we listen to, the podcasts, the radio, the news, cable, Netflix, Google searches, you name it. Why does it matter? Why is that important for us? Well, studies tell us that adults 18 years and older, and, and not just, let me preface this, that it's not just, uh, the, the, the studies are not skewing to just the, the younger demographic of 18 to 25. When you look at the age breakdown, it is across the board in the, in the teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, 70s, uh, that the average American, Nielsen Research says, spends 9.8 hours a day consuming some source of media or all forms of media. The average, I think the majority of people in this room fall into the category of 18 years old or older. We are spending 9.8 hours a day listening to the radio, watching the news, turning on Netflix, watching YouTube videos, Google searching, Wikipedia, Newspapers, magazines, books, cell phones, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, you name it. Why should we talk about media? I think that if we spend nearly half of our day consuming something, that it should be laid next to the word of God and say, Lord, how do we navigate this for your glory and do this correctly? Anyone else? Agree. You know, the Apostle Paul, he was speaking to a church. He wrote a letter to the church in Rome, the Roman church. And there was a couple things that he gave them, and I feel are important for us as followers of Christ, some, some wisdom nuggets, some important things that their lives were to reflect. And the first was in Romans 12, verse 2, and he says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. He says this, don't conform to culture. And as followers of Christ, we are charged to say we, we must not look like culture. We must look like followers of Christ, it's gonna change how we live. You see, culture uh, shows it, that literally uh, many people, in fact, millions of people, feel that it's okay to get on their cell phone, download an app, and um, the whole purpose is to find somebody to hook up with that night. And so I can swipe right or swipe left and pick somebody to have a one night stand with and move on. Culture uses media differently, yeah. right? That would never happen here in Southern Oregon, but you know, in those big cities. Yeah, right. And media can be used in a great way, but we have to say as the church, what I consume matters. 
And I don't want to just look like culture, but I want to I want to be counterculture and bring hope into culture, not hide from culture. The answer, in case you're worried this morning, is they're going to tell me to throw the phone away, go get one of those corded phones, and. <laughs> I have played with one of those. I don't know that I ever used one. At a museum. <laughs> oh, that's my dad's joke. So Paul tells the church in Rome, he says, don't look like culture, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're going to think different. And second, he tells them in Romans 16, verse 19, but everyone knows you're obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. I want you to be wise in doing what's right and to stay innocent of any wrong. Be wise. This is what Paul's charge to the church was. He says, guys, let's be wise in doing good, but be innocent of any wrong. And I think we need wisdom to say, Lord, how do we use media, which is a tool, it is a resource. Can I get an amen for Google? <laughs> you guys were like, we can't amen for Google. I don't think it's biblical. I love Google. Pastor Steve has taught us a great tool that you no longer have to know how to spell because Google says you mean to say, you're like, that's right, that's what I meant, Google. I just added seven extra T's because I don't know how to spell. But Google, thank the Lord for Google, come on. I love Yelp. When I go to a new city, I can read through a bad food review like nobody's business. I'm like... This is just a free tip for the 11 a.m. service. If you're a sushi fan and the Yelp review says lots of good sushi, run. Because if sushi is ever described by a lot, it's a bad description. You want small but mighty. Okay. Great sushi. That is not big. Oh, I'm just kidding. That's... You guys are like, we hate sushi. I love sushi. But he says to the church, be wise and doing good. Media is not the devil, right? But it is, it's a tool that can be used for the glory of God, but it's also a tool that we have to be wise in what we consume and how we consume it, yeah. right? And Paul says, hey, let's be wise in, in doing good, but innocent of wrong. Let's avoid the, the pitfalls that may come in culture, correct? So this morning, we're going to ask ourselves some questions, and, and we're, going to, we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us as we look at the Word and as we ask questions. Does that sound good? And, and so the first question, some wisdom questions, we look at is in the area of what we are consuming. And I want to ask you this, do you know what you're eating? Do you know what you're eating? Um... I recently, not recently, years back, got a, a personal trainer. And I was thinking, first real training session, I'm ready to come in and be like, give me the workout, you know? Like, I'm ready, boss. I'm ready, coach. Put me in the game, you know? Like, show me how to use these machines and, like, how to do some cool push-ups where you, like, clap and fall, you know? <laughs> I still cannot do clap and fall. I just do the fall part. But um, I go to my first training session and the trainer doesn't give me a workout. They don't take me, the first thing they do is not walk me over to the machines. The first thing they do is say, I want you to write down everything you eat. I want you to write a food diary of what you are consuming. And how many know if I asked you today, what, what's, what do you eat? What did you eat yesterday? You'd be like, well, I had like, I had like a bowl of oatmeal with lots of brown sugar, but we won't talk about that. I had a bowl of oatmeal, like a ham sandwich, and a chicken dinner. And then we'd say, what did you really eat? Well, I guess like in between lunch and breakfast, I had like a few Oreos. Oh yeah, I had a Snickers bar. And oh yeah, I think I might have like snuck some Doritos out of my kid's lunch box. Oh, and I also had like an ice cream sundae with brownie fr fudge crumbles on top. How many know that when you actually look at what you eat, it's a lot more than you are willing to say, right? When it comes to our media usage, it's really easy to go, I'm good, I'm great, let's move on. But when we stop and we start asking ourselves, what am I consuming, we're oftentimes surprised. 
oh, I didn't realize I was consuming that much content. I didn't realize I was feeding my spirit those things. So here's some questions we got to ask ourselves. The first one is this. When it comes to what you are consuming, what you read, what you watch, what you're listening to, does this glorify God? Does this glorify God? How many of us, if before we hit play on the newest Netflix series, ask this question, how many of us would hit back and change it? You see, here's the thing. God wants us to live a congruent life. A life where our Sunday morning worship matches our Friday night internet search. Where our Sunday morning praise matches what we're watching and listening to throughout the week. And so the first question when we ask what does this, because it's not does this make me feel good, but does this glorify God? Because that is our aim and our mission is God, I want to bring you glory in what I say, do, how I live, right? Second question to ask ourselves is, is this leading me into sin? Is this leading me into sin? I think most of us, if we talked about when we fell into an area of temptation, where we fell into sin, it oftentimes, the ultimate destruction started with a series of small decisions. And you have to ask, is this constant consuming of news talk radio? Am I feeding my spirit on things where all of a sudden I'm developing a critical attitude and a critical spirit? Is this constant viewing of Facebook causing me to start having a spirit of comparison and always comparing what I don't have to what other people do have? You see, C.S. Lewis said this, indeed the safest road to hell is the gradual one. It's the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without a sudden turnings, without sudden turnings, without milestones, and without signposts. Indeed, the safest road to hell is the gradual one. And I think sometimes we look at people and we say, why did that marriage fall apart? But you know what? It's usually small decisions. Suddenly it was compromising what you watched. And suddenly lust began to fill your marriage and suddenly temptation came on your searches and suddenly addiction to pornography happened. Suddenly it was that woman feeling discontent and so she all of a sudden friended an old boyfriend. And you have to ask yourself in our media consumption, is this leading me to sin? Oh, it's just a Google search. It's just this. Yeah, but, but where is it ultimately end? It got real quiet in here. You guys are just checking your Facebooks. <laughs> it's funny. I'm looking around and I see some people on their phones. I'm like, this is working. <laughs> is this, sorry, the next question, have I be, become numb to the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Have I become numb to the conviction of the Holy Spirit? You see, the Bible tells us in the book of John that one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is he leads us into all truth, he, he guides us to the truth, but he also he convicts us of sin. He convicts us of sin. Here's the thing, conviction is not punishment, it is a gift. It, 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 if you're on the freeway and you're driving and you get a little drowsy and you start to veer off the road, you begin to hear this loud noise. Someone just told me, Katie told me they're rumble. Rumble strips is the correct term. You hit rumble strips and those rumble strips quickly alert you to say, get back on the road. They are not, you don't go, you idiot rumble strip, you saved me from distraction, uh, destruction. No, and that's the Holy Spirit is the ultimate rumble strip who goes, oh, bad idea. Not going to be good for your future. And I think we got to ask ourselves, are there things that you now consume that six months ago you felt convicted about? Was there ever a moment where the Holy Spirit said, hold on, wait a minute, back up? And now you no longer sense that. I know there's been times and seasons in my life where 
I ignored the working of the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden it was like, I used to feel a check about that. Oh no, I'm so sorry, Holy Spirit, that I have ignored your conviction. Right? Maybe that's just for me. I'll take it. Next question, is this the most important thing I could be doing? Really practical. Sometimes it's not a conviction thing, a sin thing, it's just a wisdom in your time management. You only have X amount of time a day. Do you have the time to afford to give it to whatever media it is? Right? So you gotta ask, is this the most important thing I could be doing? Should I even choose? Perhaps it's even choosing what media you'll consume. And so maybe you'll listen proactively to a good podcast that's gonna help you grow versus aimlessly listening to the radio. So asking, is this the most important thing I can do? Next question, am I addicted? Most of us, when we have an addiction, don't think we have an addiction. Are you addicted to your phone? No. Right? If you want to know what addiction looks like, come to youth on a Wednesday night, and I will show you teenagers who you would think this is glued to their hand. You're like, hey. It wouldn't be any of these teenagers because they love Jesus and none of them. They literally, if you see teenagers on Wednesday nights not running around, go look if there's a plug-in near there. And it's not all of them. I'm making a broad, sweeping judgment. But are you addicted? Is there something you're trying to medicate by what you're consuming? Am I trying to find worth in likes? Am I trying to find fulfillment by living vicariously through someone else's life? Am I trying to find significance by feeling a part of other people's world and what I'm consuming? And you have to ask, am I addicted? And maybe you're here today and you're struggling with some addictions that, that are, are not of God. You need to, there are people here to help you find freedom. Not only is God's spirit here to bring freedom and his power, but there are people here that you may need to come and say, I need help because I'm consuming toxic things that are hurting my life and I need help. And this is a good place to come. Come on. The church is not for perfect people. It's for people, real humans in need of a real savior, Jesus, who are on a journey growing, right? Allowing God to change us, allowing God to work in our lives. Next question, you guys doing all right? Would I say this to someone if they were right in front of me? Would I say this to someone if they were right in front of me? Or am I way bolder in my text messages than in my, in my face? You know what's interesting? Paul actually kind of addresses this in one of his letters. He tells them, he's like, hey guys, um, I'm sorry that I have to be so bold in this letter to you, but I'm not with you, so I have to say it. But he was kind of addressing, if I was with you, I would say the same thing. Right? And I wanted to ask you this. In your, what you say, when we send a text message, a message, when we post something, let's be true that what we would say in person is what we would post online. And we wouldn't be bolder online than we would in person. You ever seen that person that never talks to you at church and then you go home and you check your Facebook and they're like throwing it down like Chinatown on there and you're like, they never talk. And they just, they just slammed seven people and you're like, <laughs> it was another church I was at. It wasn't Joy Church, <laughs> right? Would I say this if they were in front of me, right? Listen. If you have like a real issue with somebody, go talk to them in person. Don't text your kids correction. I'm gonna get you when you get, you know, like. <laughs> tell them in, you might need to say, you better pray for your life on your way home because you're about to get it. Like pre-warn them, but, right? Trust me, when I was a teenager, my parents weren't like, hey, I was afraid to confront you on this. <laughs> they weren't, they just said it. What I say is, lastly, this is for all the parents. Do you know what your kids are consuming? Do you actually know what your kids are consuming? You see, your kids, 
They won't tell you this, but they want you to give them boundaries and they need you to give them boundaries. I've been working it with our youth for over 12 years now. And in the last five years, the game has changed completely. And the temptations and the struggles and what is at their fingertips is unreal. And if you think you know what that app can do, you probably don't know what that app can do. And your kids need you to set real boundaries and they need you to actually cut them off sometimes for the sake of their, 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 their soul and health and life. And I would encourage you if you say, I am so naive to what's out there, that's okay, but now you need to come and get some help and ask for help to have people who are aware of what's going on help give you some insight. Right. Your kids need you to give them boundaries, right? right? Do you know what they're actually consuming? So here's the next question for us is, what is the real cost? What is the real cost? We're called to be all there. What is the real cost? Jim Elliott said this, wherever you are, be all there. Wherever you are, be all there. You see, there is a real cost. Every hour that I give to media is an hour that I can't give somewhere else. Now, it may be worth it, but you got to know there is a real cost that you, may be, you and I may be missing out on genuine conversations with people. It may mean that when I'm disconnected like I have been so many times at a coffee shop and I'm just glued to my phone, that I may be paying the cost of not having a real conversation with someone that needs to know Jesus. There may be the real cost that if, I'm, if you're consumed by that TV show that your kids come in and they don't find you ready to talk with them and you may be missing a life-changing conversation. Never think that there is not a cost, right? It may be a worthwhile cost. I'm not saying never watch TV or never do this and that, but I think we need to be understanding of the transaction we are making with our time, with our heart, with our mind, and all that we do, right? What is the cost? Recently, you know, if you, if you know my husband, Riley, he is a, a man who's all about being present, and he's helped me a lot. He's like, I want to have a real conversation with you, you know, not like... <laughs> There's no way that we'd get, be one of those couples like texting on the couch next to each other like, hey, can you pass the salt? Um, <laughs> I'm sure that happens. But recently I downloaded the game Bejeweled. Bejeweled, yes. It's like a 1990s game. And, <laughs> and, uh, and so he saw me playing it and he, he downloaded it and he started playing it like not very much, but he started playing it. And he was like, I don't like the man I've become. Those were the words. I don't like the man I've become from this game. I'm like, sorry, I bejeweled you. I, I fooled you with this game. What is the cost? What is the cost? The Apostle John wrote a letter, a short letter in 2 John. And in this letter he writes, and it's pretty short, and he says these words in verse 12 of 2 John, I have much more to say to you. There's so much I want to say to you, but I don't want to do it with paper and ink, for I hope to visit you soon and talk with you face to face. Then our joy will be complete. In case you haven't noticed, the Bible never says iPhone. I'm waiting for that version to come out, but it's not there. And so the Apostle John, when he's writing, their technology was different, but technology at that time was paper and ink. It was pen and paper. 
And he felt so strongly. He said, there's so much I want to say to you, but I don't want to use the modern technology of our time to say it all. I want to see you face to face and have a real conversation because there's something that happens when you are eyeball to eyeball with somebody. Like, I'm thankful for technology. I'm a technology nerd. I love new gadgets, but you know what? There is no replacement when you sit across the table from somebody and they tell you their heart and they pour out their life. There's something about that. And John says, there's so much and my joy will be complete when I can be back with you and tell you everything that I have to say to you. And I wonder when the last time we said, no, 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 I'm not going to text it to you. I'm not going to Facebook it to you. I'm not going to even call you to tell you. I want to sit eyeball to eyeball and talk with you about what God is doing, what's going on in my life, where I'm really at, right? As we're getting near the landing, I think we have to look at this third area of cleansing. It's time to change the filter. So I think every one of us, if we live in today's world, would say, you know, there's some junk that gets in my life from what I consume. Sometimes I just get clouded and, and so much content and so many voices and so many things and, and, and I just need a, a filter change. I need my heart to be cleansed. I need a new perspective. I need God's perspective. And the psalmist David, he wrote these words. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. And I think some of us, let that be our prayer today. God, create a new heart in me. God, if there's anywhere where my heart has been shaped by culture, when it needs to be shaped by your word, would you wash me? Would you cleanse me? Would you help me to let what I consume bring you glory and not consume me? Create in me a clean heart. God, wash away my, purify my desires. Help me if I'm trying to medicate problems in my life with what I consume instead of feeding upon your word and your presence. And as the band comes up here, this morning I think it's time for us to create space, to make room for Jesus. Create space. Life gets so loud and noisy and distracted. And I just want to ask, could I ask every person in this room, I know we take notes on our phone, I want to ask you to take the next like three minutes right now. And I want you to just put your phone away, put your device away, and I want you to just in this moment create space for Jesus. Because we live in a constant society of noise and distractions and updates. Like I have now like a, f- a watch that taps me and alerts me and notifies me and then my phone alerts me and notifies me and my computer alerts pop up and in my car I get in and my, my phone is hooked up and you can call me and I can talk to you legally. And <laughs> there's so much noise. And here's what Jesus did when he walked this earth. He created space to meet with the Father. And it says in Mark chapter 1 that Jesus, before daybreak, for all you young people, that means freakishly early. (laughs) Before the sun was out, he got up and he removed himself from his current location and he went to an isolated place to pray to meet with the Father. And I think the voice above every voice that we need to navigate this life is the voice of our Father. The voice of the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us and we have to create space because if you don't create space, everything else will consume and will come in and it will be there and there will always be, Fox News is not going anywhere. CNN will always be there. Facebook is a faithful friend. So if you don't create space for Jesus, other things will come. 
But Jesus, every day, he modeled, and you see it throughout the New Testament, throughout the Gospels, that he would get away by himself and say, I need to meet with the Father. If Jesus, our Savior, did that, how much more does this girl need it and we need it? And you see, the Bible says, as we wait on God, as we create space, we will find strength and grace for what we need. It says in Isaiah that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You won't, you'll run and you'll not grow weary. As you create space for Jesus, the grace you need for all that he has before you, it's found in the space you create for him. It's found in the secret place as you get into his presence and say, God, there's a lot of voices, there's a lot of opinions, there's a lot of pull, and sometimes it's hard to navigate these waters, but your voice is the voice I tune to. Your voice is the voice I cling to. I'm putting away everything else, and in its time, I'll pick it up again. But in this moment, I'm creating space because I need you to navigate me through every moment, every day, every time. God, help me. So as you are there in this moment, I want you to ask, are there distractions that are choking out the fruit of God's word in my life? See, when Jesus talked about the parable of the sower, there was one seed he said there was a seed that fell among the thorns and it represents those who hear the message but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. They receive the message, they go to church and they hear this message but the minute you walk out the door you have 34 notifications you can respond to. They receive the message but it's crowded up by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. And the voice message translation says it this way a third group hears the message but as time passes the daily anxieties the pursuit of wealth and life's addicting delights outpace the growth of the message in their hearts even if the message blossoms and fruit begins to form the fruit never fully matures because the thorns choke out the plant's vitality but some people hear the message and this let this be us joy church medford and let it take root deeply in receptive hearts made fertile by honesty and goodness with patient dependability and they bear good fruit. Amen. You might be feeling a little choked today by distractions, but this morning we can come and say, God, I'm intentionally creating space and time to silence the voice of everything else and I need to hear your voice above every other voice and your, his voice will teach you how to navigate how you use all that you consume. Would you stand, church? This morning as, as you came to this place, there were many of you who came and you came to this place looking for a relationship with Jesus, a relationship with God. And you're saying, you know what, I, I not only just need to create space to, to meet God, but I need to create complete space in my heart to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I've been living this life trying to do it in my own strength, in my own way, but I recognize today that I need Jesus as my Lord and my Savior, I need his life, his freedom, his salvation. And if you came to this place and you say, you know what, I need Jesus. I'm putting my faith in him to be my Lord and my Savior. And you want to give your life to him today. Would you step out of your seat and come forward right now? 
every one of you that came to this place today and you say, I need Jesus to be seated on the throne of my heart. I don't want to live another day without Jesus. I need him in my life. Would you just come right now from the back to the front? Every person here that came looking for Christ, come on, he is in this place. His presence is here and he's inviting you to come home. He loves you. Come on, and has made a way for a relationship. So if you're here, and you want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, just step out of your seat, come forward right now. Every single one of you, we want to create time and space this morning to give you an opportunity to receive Christ. So right now, every one of you, come on down. Awesome. Come on. Awesome. Praise Jesus. Awesome. Every person here, you know, you're saying, you know what, today I I need to create space Give Jesus everything in my life. Come on, you know he's calling you this morning. Would you just come right now, every person? Want to give one one last call. You're ready to surrender your life to Jesus. Come today. Amen. Come on, church, we're going to all pray together. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I give you my life. I put my complete trust in you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you are God and that you gave your life as a perfect sacrifice. I receive your life, I receive your freedom, and I believe that you rose again and that you live forevermore. Wash away my sins, help me to follow you all the days of my life. If you will be my God, I will be your child. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to take a moment, church, to respond to this word. Um, In a moment, you're going to get a card, and this just has some thoughts and questions even from today's message to hopefully go home and We're going to give you a form of media to talk about media um, to to help us process this word. But if you're here and you say, you know what, the Holy Spirit's nudging on my heart that that I need to maybe make some adjustments in what I'm consuming and I need to create space in my world for Jesus. I need to just be creating that space to meet with God every day and to guard what I'm consuming. If that's you, would you just lift your hands this morning and we're gonna respond to the word. Any, anybody here, you just say, you know what, God's challenging me, awesome, to, to just create intentional space to be with him and to allow the Holy Spirit to just show us what we're consuming and to, to, to please him in all that we consume, all that we do. God, I thank you for your sons and your daughters as we lift our hands before you, God, as a just outward expression of an inward decision that God we're here to say Lord we cannot live without you and Lord we want your voice above every other voice God even as your word says that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God Lord we hunger for your word and your voice above every other voice that this world has to offer And Lord, this morning, I pray for your wisdom for every one of us. Lord, if anyone here is struggling with addiction, I pray today, God, they would find freedom and that they would find even community to to begin to walk out that freedom in God. Lord, today, if you're nudging on our hearts, places to just guard, I pray you would show us wisdom, how to live a life that is guarded. And Lord, today, would you help us to be a people who create space to meet with you every day. Oh God, let us be a people who are moved, Lord, by your word, who follow your voice in this world. We love you, Jesus. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to worship. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your friends, Holy Spirit.
this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory. Fill the atmosphere. Your glory. 